so we can go into the um, agenda. I suppose we should just state our names to confirm for the for the, the record. Uh, Chris Palamas, Chair. Linda Desmond, ADA Coordinator. Judy Kimberly, Secretary. City Councilor, Mary Ann Large, Vice Chair. Leticia Woyle, Member. Jim Winston member. Hi, Jim. How are you doing on your sleep portion? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I you sleep. You get woken up every night when you have a 16 uh, week old child at home. That's great. That's great. I'm always a thrill that you're some kind of an update. Yes. All righty. Well, um, the uh, first item, well, first item is uh, approval of the January 16, 2017 minutes. Vote to approve. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Vote no. Page uh, minutes are approved. Our next order of business uh, was I had had a brief conversation with. Uh, uh, Kristen uh, Alecos, the, I believe the acting uh, director of the Cancer uh, Connection. She's not able to be here, so we will find, I'll, I'll uh, with my apologies for not having, having locked that in, I'm not sure it was dropped, but we will reschedule that for another occasion. Uh, essentially, the concern there is that, uh, particularly with the Cancer Connection, so many, <coughs> A significant proportion of the folks being served there may benefit from medical marijuana as a, um, for pain and appetite and for other reasons. But for some people, there's a kind of a cultural um, concern, um, given the whole history of it being identified with more uh, toxic and dangerous drugs. So at some point in the future, we'll take up that possible question about how to um, get information out to let people uh, make appropriate um, decisions for their medical on, interest. Could I please add on to that? Um, on February 27th at 5 o'clock p.m., um, Community Resource, we're going to be talking about the ordinances that are coming forth to City Council on marijuana. We have four zoning ordinances coming in also, and at 7 o'clock p.m. that same day, legislative matters will bring up that four zoning matters. So the two meetings are going to be about the marijuana and also the four zonings at 7 o'clock. Yeah, so the date on that is the 27th? Yes, February 27th. And? And that's on a Tuesday. Where? And it's 5 p.m. at Council Chambers. Right. And after that meeting at 7 o'clock is Legislative Matters. Then on March 1st, our Finance Committee will also be bringing up and talking about the sales tax being in place in the City of North Beach. And what the uses, potential uses are of the, the, the additional revenues that can be realized from marijuana sales. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is just a, it's a complex and a very important set of questions that rise from the expanded uh, use of marijuana and, and hopefully the direction of it to the, the best benefit. Uh, um, I, I just want to say that even, even when there is recreational marijuana available, people that have medical marijuana yeah. will get a discount um, because it's the need for medical reasons. So, and they have it access to it now yes yeah, yeah. So. they're likely also to be uh, somewhat separate facilities and there are uh, questions which include uh, doctors being discouraged from providing active and detailed guidance to individuals so um, I, I hope to attend that that council session so our next agenda item is uh, the lack of assistive listening and amplification systems uh, for public meetings. And these are our concerns are both specifically um, the lack of uh, 
meetings that may be a part of city government, but also other related public meetings. The occasion that, that I had that was most difficult was uh, Democratic Town Caucus, where it was impossible to, uh, to hear, and I think that's true for a significant number of individuals. I know, Mary Ann, that, that you have um, yes, um, experience. I have experience with that, with the Democratic Caucus. I've had experience, which I talked with Elizabeth Silva on what she heard again. And she said that you had talked with her also in regards to that situation. And I told her something has to be done. It is very unfair for people who are hearing impaired. And I said, everybody being in one room together, you know, just like we did have different wards all put into one room and everybody's talking and they not realizing, what, even when you have hearing aids on, the vibration that it causes. And she understood. And I also told her that there was great concerns that was brought to my attention of her standing on the table, okay, of falling and hitting her head. And she said, yeah, she did not do that anymore. I mean, that, that no, was right. Well, was not. So, anyways, also at City Council, um, I had approached three of the girls that I, I knew one of them very well in regards to, you know how our desks are laid out at City Council. Well, because of the hearings that we had, they were embacking me against the wall, sitting on the floor, clicking and clicking and clicking, and hearing it's going bananas. So I went up to them and asked them, please, your fingers. They were extremely polite, very, very polite about it, and they did not do it. So I do not have a problem with the group. They're very polite, and they understood that I did have a problem even with my hearing aids on and what it actually causes, which I had to go see my hearing doctor because it really affected my left ear. So the big question that we're having right now Many people are voicing at city council that they cannot hear city councilors talking. Talking. And if you see, you'll see some of them that are going like this, which I know a couple of even one of my friends who's out there constantly. So Councilor Dwight brought it up at city council of me bringing it up, which I've already talked to both you and Judith on this situation, of the Commission on Disabilities going on to that web website and looking up what Bill had found about the technology they have where, say you're sitting out there and listening to counselors speak, it's a system that you just put over your head. And yes. I asked Bill what the price would be and he said maybe about a thousand or so. He wasn't really sure. I think that's super. But the problem I have with this as a city councilor, we have been asking for help for many, many years, many years from the city. And I don't think because we have money in our budget. No, I. Do you know what I'm this saying? This is absolutely not something to come out of the Disability Commission budget. This is part of the general assessment that we are doing overall. Exactly. It's under that heading of effective communications okay. under the ADA. What mm -hmm. I am concerned about and a little bit confused is that, um, yeah, I, I don't need to look at that. We have extensive regulations about assistive listening systems, mm -hmm. which have to be evaluated, but there is a sign on the wall it says there is an assistive listening system. Eight years ago, I used it, but last time I tried to use it, they couldn't find it. So, and I, I, I think that the, the questions that have to be raised is, you know, where is that? Is it a, is it a, a wired system, a permanent system? And then um, an overall assessment, I think, 
what what is needed is both a a uh, probably a wired system in, in council chamber, but also portable systems uh, available because he mentioned wireless. Yeah, but there's, it's a fairly complex assessment of what exactly. the best technology is. So that's why I, I'd be reluctant to just look on websites. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's a little bit more to it than that. But I, I think this is something we should, as we continue on the on the self evaluation process. Um, you know, clearly has to be dealt with. But the first question is going to be, you know, where are any receivers for the system that's basically indicated by sign and check? Counsel? Question. I do have to say that because my hearing aids were becoming new ones and I didn't have any to put on, they do have them. They are so heavy, it's disgusting. The big black things that are about that big. And I couldn't handle it on my head. So I did not wear that night. I just did what I had to do. But there, there is one that I can answer for. I would have to talk with our council clerk or maintenance to see if, they, if there are others somewhere in there. Are they? Yeah, we if have you could have them person? identify what what they do have, we can look at that. Okay. And then I think probably uh, communicating with the Commission for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing on you know what the current developments of technology. Yeah. Because if it were purchased even a couple of years ago, you know there may be new technology available. Right. But also some of it, it may be that you need both amplification and assistive hearing. So yeah. so uh, okay. let's let's take that on. And that I would consider a more appropriate use of this commission's money would be if we potentially need some technical assistance on that assessment and design so that we can identify to the city what should be purchased and then maintained. But that the purchase and maintenance really should come from the city. I agree. And I so would. don't many other people. I agree to that, actually. Thank you, Chris. So let's try to, to expedite that. Okay. Okay. Uh, but, but, uh, we, have uh, uh, we have been uh, joined by two uh, visitors. Uh, yeah. Um, I was just wondering about that. Hi. 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 H
No. Nothing? I uh, because I know that yeah. because right now we've got applicants from interviewing some and we do not see anybody yet for the commission on just Because Emma put I know and had acknowledged her application I, months ago. I will call the mayor's office yeah. tomorrow. They, yeah. they usually yeah. send you send it on to me when when someone gets an application. I have like one sitting in the council on aging, so um, but I didn't get one. For it it was months. I'll ago. check it out. All right. Yeah. So it months seems something's been ago. lost in the mill. Let's get it surfaced. I have I don't no. know. Okay. We'll, we'll find it. Okay. Oh. We'll find it. I hope your mouth. Excuse me. How do you spell your last name? Uh, Cornwell. C O R N W E L L. And what's your address? 35 Holyoke Street, Northampton. Okay. I'm going to check on that tomorrow. Yeah. And have them that's yeah, because it. she had an acknowledgement. Exactly. So. I hope you'll find it soon. Because paperwork is a lot of work. I hope, to, I hope you guys will find it. Thank you. Absolutely. Maybe if it was I'm some. Sure. Let's get it expedited. I'm, I'm just wondering if they thought we were at capacity, and then, but I did ask them to remove <laughs> a couple of people that weren't uh, coming, and they were no longer active. So, but, yeah, I think I think next <coughs> the next meeting, I don't think should be a problem at all. So you can just let me. Know. Right. It would for, well, for her being accepted yeah. now. It would have to go in front of the city council. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Plus, we got an interview on. Oh, okay. So there's a little process. bit of a fourth step process. Okay. And so what I do is when I know, I can go ahead and email somebody and give me reasons. That's acceptable. So that they don't have to come for the interview. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 We, yeah. we would greatly appreciate your expertise adding this because particularly as the spring approaches <laughs> along with the communications issues we just talked about yeah. um, addressing the problem of uh, response to deteriorated walkways and roadways and, and that's going to be a fairly complicated proposition that will take a number of conversations <laughs> I'm sure with the mayor and public works so uh, that will be what, a, Emma, what, a good one for you <laughs> yeah your Emma, personal investment the procedures are you will get a call from the city services because we do all the interviewing for every board, every committee, everything right down the line. Then we interview you. Then we go through all the applicants at our meetings. And it's just not you, there's many that we interview. And it seems like the list keeps getting bigger and bigger. And then we make a full recommendation to full city council. And then it is placed on the consent agenda, and you get approved that night. If somebody has questions, a counselor will ask questions. But otherwise, it would be approved immediately on that night at city council. So right. I will keep Chris and Judith informed of when that application is hopefully going to come. Because, I mean, she's put in for it since when? January? No. Oh, it was December. Was, was it the summer, wasn't it? There's yeah, been a lot of you're it's, been, it's been six September, months. October, yeah. five, six months. Wow, come on. Yeah. Okay. So. I don't want her to get denied for that. No, so it's not. It's not going to be denied. It's just a matter of uh, finding out where it's fallen into. It's a bureaucracy. Uh, crack yeah. it. It's a bureaucracy. Precisely. Yeah. Yep. Precisely. I think that's some that's administrative that. changes in the um, in the mayor's office. Right. I think that might have been cool. where it got lost. I would just like to say that. Yeah. Do you think she has to fill up a nano? Yeah, no, I doubt it. find it. I hope so. Yeah. Okay, so our next item of business is um, we have received a copy of a variance request. Excuse me? Oh. Thank you. ADA coordinator transition. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. oh no. Is there any news? Um, I'm meeting with the mayor. My supervision this month um, is tomorrow, so I'll get a sense of it regarding, um, you know, I mean, 
I don't think that it's going to be as um, straightforward as we would like it. You know, I don't think that um, in, by the time I leave at the end of March, March 30th will be my last day, um, whether we'll have a professional person um, in a regional position in place. Um, I don't think the city or our, our partnering cities um, work that quickly. Um, so, um, so my suggest so what's probably going to happen is my successor is going to be in, sitting in this um, position, this this seat for a few more months before we get going on this. The only thing I can say, and I sent everybody the um, application of the um, the training that's. Um, opened up in Mass in Boston for um, all the uh, new ADA coordinators, and I highly recommend that. I'm very sorry they didn't have it for me when I started. So at least they'll they'll hit the ball. They'll they'll have a better uh, per perception of what their responsibilities are. Um, they won't feel so lost. The other thing is is that we have a wonderful membership, and I I know that you'll be. Um, you'll be helping that person as much as you've helped me. Um, but I still feel, and I know the mayor does too, um, that we do need that this, this position to be gone from the Council on Aging and Senior knows. Services, and that it is a regional position, even if it's a part-time position, um, shared between a couple of the municipalities. That's, that's going to be... be very helpful when I told you. Yeah. I, so and I have been... Or on this place and learn all the laws. You're not talking about something happening here in one year. Yeah. Yeah. And also to be a true advocate. You know, I mean <laughs> Exactly. You, you know, I don't always picture I you know, I might trip on a sidewalk and the first thing that goes through my mind is it isn't that, you know, how is a person in a wheelchair going to get? Now I've been acclimated to exactly. think that way, but exactly. that's not your first response in life, you know, and so, um, so the best case scenario will probably happen a few months after, and uh, but I'll get uh, better details um, after my meeting tomorrow. Absolutely. Cool. Thank you. But we know we're all pushing for the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hope we'll, do a, we'll probably do a party for you before you go. I I have a party plan, and you're all welcome. Uh -huh. What is that? Yeah, it's, is um, I I'm not part of the staff is putting this on. It's on um, the Monday before the 30th, hold on, March, uh, the, 30th. The, 20, the 26th, um, from 4 to 6 here. And you're all welcome. Monday, March 26th. 6th, 4 to 6. 4 to 6. Yeah. And I'll miss you, when you got, you've been wonderful. For someone who really didn't know what I was doing, I, I feel like I'm almost ready to go into um, Disability yeah. Assessments 101. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, oh. yeah, but I'm not graduated yet. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I hope you'll keep in touch with all of us. Oh, sure. I, I hope to, too. It's not going to go back to Ireland here. Well, actually, next week, but yeah. only, <laughs> only for oh, a week. She cannot stay away from there. I will not play. for another decade. I don't play her, babe. Yeah. Very now, good. Um, to be continued, we certainly know we're all in agreement about the direction um, that's needed. So our next item of business is St. John's Church um, is going to have a small addition, and I believe it's installation of an elevator along with it at any rate. They are doing a level which um, basically requires a variance. They have formulated a variance request to the access board that would um, accept the current point of entry, which is to the left as you face the church, mm -hmm. and an additional accessible entry, which will be introduced at the rear, that is on the campus side, mm -hmm. um, in the course of the renovation. Uh, but not to require an additional ramp be placed at the very front entrance to the church. It is a historic uh, district. Um, visually, the two entrances are very near each other, and the accessible entrance is the principal entrance uh, followed for most uh, church uh, 
most church events. Um, I think, therefore, that it is um, a very appropriate uh, variance request for the uh, for the commission to uh, support. Um, I have a copy. It's a rather small version of the plan. If anyone uh, would like to take a look at it, it basically gives an an, an overview of the uh, of the overhead uh, description um, of the area. But are there any questions about that? It's a, it's a very typical variance request. And the uh, and the elevator will be accessed by the new entrance they're doing on the rear. Exactly. Yes. So now they'll have access to all levels, which they do. Is that a benefit? And Bob was telling me all about the changes that they were doing and so forth. I would like to make a motion that um, we write a letter to zoning in regard of supporting this project. Oh. I, I think that letter is to the, the architectural access board. Correct? It is in support of it that we should write. If we write a letter, I think we can uh, write a letter and addressing it to the architect for inclusion of the submission um, and, and documentation of their variance request. Can I see that? That the cleanest thing will be to um, send it to the architect who is the one who is re requested. Yeah. Because the issue is with the access board, not with someone. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I'm checking yeah. it. Um, this is the, uh, the, the, the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board will hear this variance um, request. They are also, they're basically contacting, they routinely contact three entities, the Commission on Disability, uh, the, the, uh, the building official, and the local Center for Independent Living uh, that is um, stopping us. Um, okay, I was very impressed when the architect talked to me about the commitment of, of the, the parish and um, how really everything that they do is, is concerned about the accessibility of their church. Um, I mean, maybe it just might be something we might be able to invite a member um, to the meeting tomorrow, um, next month and just kind of recognize this kind of commitment. I mean, it's exceptional. It's not just this, but it's like, you know, to make three floors accessible in an old mm -hmm. historic building. Certainly, and, certainly. I, I think it's useful for the commission to, to applaud these kind of uh, yeah. positive steps. And if we did something like once a year recognized in some kind of platform the, the commitment of um, a community member, I think it might I, I was suggesting that to the that we might recognize in some kind of accommodation or something, um, and she said that you know I think that the the parish and the administration of the parish would be very appreciative of that. Yep. Yeah. I, I think that's great. Very good. Yeah. Um, so are there any further questions on the bill? Do you want to? So the uh, the motion is to. Um, Send a to authorize the commission to um, develop a letter of support and submit it to the architect for documentation to the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board. I second it. How old that building? Uh, yeah, United. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Mm. Very good. Thank Our you. Next order of business is uh, to follow up on the city council vote and communication with MOD um, mm. regarding the accessibility grants. This is, uh, as you remember, at the, the last meeting, um, uh, Wayne, um, the director of the Office of Sustainability and Planning came. We had had a, um, a disconnect in our understanding of the discussions of how the design costs for a grant which has been awarded from the Massachusetts Office on Disability uh, would be paid for. Uh, Wayne's recollection was that uh, um, the commission had committed to paying what would be a design fee of 25K. We said, I shall paraphrase, oh no, oh no, 
no chance we would do that. Um, following our discussion at the last meeting, uh, we had suggested a meeting with the mayor. The follow-up to that, though, was I received a call from the mayor that he preserved, preferred not to have a meeting, which would have invoked the open meeting law, but discuss it with me directly, uh, which we did, and the mayor had no question about um, participating and putting the, the bulk of the monies in from the city. We had discussed uh, a commitment of up to 5K out of our commission funds. I conveyed that to the mayor. Uh, at the following city council meeting, this was basically presented for a vote. I spoke at the beginning, but did not stay around for the vote, and uh, the vote was approved uh, to approve 20,000 uh, for the design support out of city funds, and um, uh, are making a contribution of 5K from our, our uh, disability commission account. As a city council. So that's the long and short of it. The tone again from the mayor was very supportive and understanding of the directions that we're um, that we're moving in, and I wanted to say that this it was a small just difference in recollection. Uh, that Wayne has continued to do very very good work and is an important uh, uh, ally for us uh, uh, in this. And as a city councilor, I also went and spoke myself of the value of what was being done with this committee. And Linda spoke also. And I forgot to say Mary Ann's. And then I fell over um, Ben Judy's last name too, so that I got know. me all messed up. <laughs> other other than that, I'm usually pretty a professional. Yeah, yeah, I thought you were rude just to call me Kimberly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kimberly. <Kimmy. laughs> well, that's, 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 that's still was very nice of you to show up. Oh, I show up. It. Yeah. It, it was all very good. Uh, the other thing, again, is I think the sense that we're trying to convey, this is one of the first times City Council has heard a uh, discussion of the, the work that is being that is being done here, uh, and, you know, and let them know there's going to be, um, there is going to be more activity related to ADA uh, compliance. And uh, um, I think the environment is becoming receptive. The new president of the City Council, I think, is... Uh, uh, heard on a number of occasions that there's significant um, assessment and planning work going on mm -hmm. here. So, uh, any any other questions about that? Um, no. We did not take up all that we might have in a meeting with the mayor, but with efficiency, we got the uh, part of the matter done. The the real concern here, again, is that uh, the grant funds have to be extended by the end of June, um, and that means that they've got to really move on developing the, the design, going through the bid process, and, and getting the work done. But it seems they, they know how to, uh, how to move that process forward now. So uh, the other um, related is that uh, I did have conversation with a grants manager for the Massachusetts Office on Disability, who asked about the initial, the initial grant on the previous year which as you remember, we received the monies in June and had to expend them, I think it was within three weeks, yeah. and that was where we really began the, the assessment process. Um, as I attempted to convey to the person from Mass <coughs> Office on Disability, who is very new to that office, and I think to Massachusetts, um, that we were moving forward with this next stage, they essentially said, whoa, I'm just dealing with the first year. At some point, um, we'll get a, a summary to them um, in writing. I, I did talk about basically the scope of um, issues that we've been raising under this uh, self-evaluation uh, updating, which only uh, began in those first few weeks. So um, all of that. Uh, the tangible outcome also is, I think, a deepening connection with MOD and that we have expressed interest in partnering with them to pre present an advanced uh, uh, training here at some time in the spring. Pardon that one. I, I have some good, I have, I have some good, good news. What's that? Uh, I put, I put my, my name in for a apartment that they build in 
in Northampton. Which where? That the one that Hudson Street? Yeah, that the one that they build. They're building? Yeah, and and for to so my the lottery the the A lot of they're gonna do the lottery. I hope they pick my name up the this week. For we, said, we certainly wish you uh, good yeah. luck. Yeah. Yeah. Having an apartment we'll be your own. for you. <laughs> yeah. And was I supposed to take a test for the disability? Because I, I don't want to miss out. Yes. Uh, Am I overdue? We do have to take that conflict of on. Your mother's got a computer at home, right? Yeah, but I don't know if I'm supposed to take it. When am I supposed to take it? I don't know if I'm overdue. Well, the teacher's mother asked if I would sit with her and do it, and she was going to contact me, but I hadn't heard from her, so. Uh, I don't think you are overdue at, at this point, as if you are, I am also, but I think we should, we should have called to do it as soon as possible. Yes, but you can tell them I am diagnosed with attention deficit. Right. How could your mother do Everything gets pushed down, downstream, but, but I will promise now that I... Can you, we'll make that as a. Can you we'll talk to my mother this way? We have a few more agenda items. Yeah. We have a few more agenda items. Okay. Oh wow. So, are there any questions on that communication around the MOD grant? Um, we looking forward to seeing the changes and improvements in and behind and between City Hall and the uh, annex in the in the spring. There'll be some questions that come before us because. The complete scope of work that might be done in that area will exceed the quarter of a million that we've secured. Mm. Um, so we will assume that, that um, Wayne will be getting back to us with a, a clearer definition of the potential scope under this process. Our next item is Disability Commission schedule of meetings for 2018. Oh, yeah. Uh, did, did you, Marianne, ask for this agenda item? Yes, I did. Wondering because you think we take a month off in the summer. I like the idea. <laughs> no, I'm just saying I like the idea though. I would like the month of July or August. So I do not see a problem with that. City Council only has one meeting the month of July and the month of August. I mean, we can just not say no. We don't have two meetings, we have one. July. And many other commissions and committees do take a, a month in the summer. So I'm asking what people feel about that. Oh, yes. I, I certainly have no objection. Last summer, I thought we had a lot of work in progress, and, uh, which was reason not to. But I think uh, um, that should not be true this summer. Right. Because we've already made a plan that if the weather was bad, Look at for the following week. So, what I'm asking, like we did before, is have one of the months off, July or August. So that's up to everybody. Is there any, any preference? <laughs> August. <laughs> <laughs> August. <laughs> August. 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 Come <laughs> if my nephew comes down, I think that, that might be a good idea. Here's to any of our other members, is there any uh, problem with August being? No, that's fine. No, it's fine. Okay, we um, entertain a motion that uh, um, that the yeah, schedule yeah. include a um, uh, no meeting in the month of August for the coming year. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Very I good. Very good August. Would you be able to do up a schedule for meetings? Sure. Okay, thank you. And how about for winter once should we do the same for also two. We have one more agenda. I just wanted to add on um, about the schedule that Ruth apparently is gonna make for us. Um, the, are you talking about the dates of when our meetings are gonna be? And I think you need to put added on to that, especially the bad months of winter that if canceled okay, the following week also I would like a request like I just got mine from City Council 
is of all the holidays that are occurring and the municipal buildings are closed. Sure, I can do that. I can add that on too. Okay, I can, I'll email you that, Ruth, because I have it. Oh, good, then I'll have to read it. Right. And it's okay. good to have that. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Should we take January or February? Because those months are kind of bad and it, stuff. It, it's only if the weather is bad on the day of our meeting, and then it will be scheduled for next month. So we want to just kind of cancel in case of bad weather. Exactly. Not the whole month. We have one more. We have one more agenda item, and um, Marianne, I'm not sure whether. The agenda item as communicated to us was closed captioning for city of Northampton meetings. I, I think that was um, really about assistive listening and, and sound amplification. So, any other additional items? No, I'm not a member, but we talked about closed captioning in the NCT portion for people um, at home. That and good. that technology is moving. Okay, I, I wonder if that was what. Yeah, there's, there's no further information. We're going to be notified when the captioning um, of it's going to be of city council and school committee. Exactly. Are the, the two that they will be um, providing a real time trans captioning on. I I wonder if uh, there's been any news about the woman who. You can never park her van at Sawville House. Um, I talked um, to her. Um, I I went and I saw this spot at the spot, and um, there are two um, specific spots that show that van parking is limited to accessible van parking. And then Chris explained to me that um, even though that it shows the van and it says the ordinance, it does not mean that only vans can park there. Anybody because she that. she yes. was concerned that uh, a number of times a, a normal vehicle with, with, that was still uh, you know had a, a, a parking a placard um, was parking there, and she didn't want to call the police or anything like that. But now that I know she doesn't have that authority. So I left a message, she didn't call me back. So I said, um, basically, um, Chris and, uh, and I had a discussion. And the only thing that we can do at this point is to approach um, the housing authority and ask um, for a, a, a specific reserve spot for this one person. And, and she might be able to get it. Is that correct, according to them? There is that same provision that's applicable under housing law, you know, of a, a requirement to respond to a, a reasonable request. Mm -hmm. Un, unless, you know, an, if there are so many people over there who might demand, I, I don't know what questions that housing authority might raise, but on the face of it, we do know that people have been provided reserved spaces. It's also a matter of what are the consequences <coughs> of not having if the person is unable to park, has to go long distances. If the if, if it's not simply just a, a small annoyance of the sort we all deal with, but if it really significantly limits their use of the you know of the facility, then it's a request for a, a reasonable modification or a reasonable accommodation. Well, if she can't get her lift down. She I don't, can't get I into do not, the van. I do she not know. But what, does, what is done as an alternative, right. I don't know. Right. I don't think there's been a time that she hasn't got her lift down, but um, she's had to park in, a, you know, around the corner and a, 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 a farther away. Um, and but it's um, the ideal parking spot would be at the the last corner. See, spot that's here. the very difference between ideal, something that's just mm -hmm. a kind of inconvenience but still workable. It's if it's if there is a significant impact to not having a reserve space, then it's a reasonable request. Mm -hmm. If it's simply kind of an annoyance, I don't know. I don't recollect whether the person uses a power she chair. She uses a power chair. If she uses a power chair, um, I can't say. That's the, the conversation between that person and the housing authority, whether it constitutes a reasonable request or not. And it's the it's house not for it's not for us to make decisions, but only to clarify them. No, exactly. But if the housing authority 
denied her, then should we be talking again with her and the housing authority so that they understand what Lady what their obligation is? It's to have an appropriate process at the housing authority. Yeah, right. But in that sense, while the housing authority is administratively separate from the general right. city administrative That's structure, right. just as we've been talking right. about providing training to clarify this key provision for staff of the city, in the same way to invite the housing authority to participate and you know basically take in the same information. It's like decisions cannot be, this is the way we all do it, shooting from the hip, right. we're going to deny. Mm -hmm. It has to be considered on the basis of what the impact of the decision is against the standards articulated under the law. Who's the attorney for um, the housing authority? Do you know? Tom O'Connor, I think, I'm guessing. I think it's O'Connor. I could be wrong. I'm not sure. I've been trying to have schedule a meeting with them for a number of months. It's hard. And yeah, and I don't get responded. I mean, for, for I have two issues. Um, an issue in relation to the senior center and a re, re, an issue relating to this. And they don't really respond to me. And um, I, I can get more aggressive and, uh, you know, actually go to the office or something. I mean, from my per perspective, I would love to do this before I actually step down. Mm -hmm. because, go um, for it, Linda. Yeah. I think that would be helpful, rather than having a, yes. a new person come in and, right. and again test. And I, I think the pattern that we're concerned about is the lack of communication. And exactly. Response. That's true. Yeah. Linda, question. You try to get a hold of the new administrator? Yeah, we, I, when I first came on board, um, she called me and we met, like maybe the second month I was here. And then um, when we were talking, uh, Ken had some issues and a few things, and we decided as a, a committee that some of the executive group would go and have a talk with her. And she hasn't responded, and I, I actually talked to um, her assistant, and then now that Carmen's on board, we want to do more outreach to the Latino community at the different housing. And oh, yeah. it took us forever before um, we were able to get connected to the social worker. All right, so, so remember I told you I called her about the handicapped accessible area of Joan Tobin's immediately that day it was done. And I talked with her on the phone. That's weird. I, I, my ego is totally crushed in this position. <laughs> That's all. They, know, they, they respond to the city councilor. Do they to respond to the ADA I know, but it should be that way. No, it should not be that way. That's kind of... Oh, and I have a question. Do you... Do you, that. you yeah. are, except for you. Maybe, maybe you should... No, I was serious. Call this it. was a cancer patient. No, I... <laughs> yeah, I know. Should I just say... Put it on the short list. I will. Yep. Yes. At, at I'll least do that. Open this communication. I think we should ask. Because there are that. obviously multiple issues related to housing. Those are concerns uh, that have been raised about security, concerns mm -hmm. that have been raised about about essentially the whole process of responding to any request for accommodation. <coughs> Maybe we could seriously think of inviting the chair of the housing authority can't have all of it looking at a quorum going on. Mm -hmm. Having the chair of the housing authority or the vice chair, either one of them, and her also. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't I'm hear. I'm not sure. <laughs> <chair is. laughs> Isn't that awful? I said if we could possibly seriously think of inviting the chair of the housing authority or if that chair cannot do it, the vice chair. And also the new administrator of the housing authority. And come to our meeting. We have a round table. I like that idea. And bring forth all the concerns. I, I agree. There's, a, there's enough there that that. Exactly. So perhaps a, a first communication, yep. open up the lines of communication, basically descri describe some agreement on the, the, the scope, basically, of issues to be discussed and then an appropriate 
meeting to do that. Okay. Jerry Butler, um, okay. I There's one other uh, piece of business from the last meeting, and that was uh, uh, the issues raised included, uh, well, in particular, you emphasized the uh, non-responsiveness of the police department to concerns expressed about um, sidewalks blocked by uh, uh, trucks or other um, other vehicles that have impeded access routes, uh, but also the lack of understanding by the uh, gas station uh, staff, the, the lack of procedures to um, assist people um, in the pumping of gas when that's appropriate. Those were both issues uh, with the with the police department. Um, and I suppose that should be taken to the, the chief and then see what the appropriate line is to is to discuss. Yep. But those were, I thought it was just terrific to have someone who was that observant, uh, bringing it to the commission. <coughs> they found non-responsiveness, you know, uh, by the police department specifically. So by all means, let's uh, let's pick that one up. He also invited a, a speaker from the commission to speak at the Rotary Club. And I think we should take him up on that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Because I know he mentioned Chris. Uh -huh. Can I come to that? As, as I said, my, my concern always uh -huh. is if those are early meetings, which yeah. Rotaries and like I'll that. I'll be tracking with Phil. I'll find out. Yeah, if you would explore that, <coughs> you can see who, who I think might that be, be appropriate for us to do. How come I can't come to that? We don't have a time yet, so we'll figure this out. Oh, and they, they asked to have a single speaker yeah. from the, yeah. the commission, so Marianne will explore exactly what they mean, what the time frame is, and uh, how that might yeah. be done. And do you know what I think our disparity should do? Because uh, the city council is writing a letter for, for the immigrants. I think our city council should do something like that to help the people so they don't get deported to their own country. I think our, our disability council should help too, Mary and Martin. I think what she's talking about, we have a resolution on a, a sponsor, Bill Joy and Jim Nash, and it's a resolution calling for DHS to extend temporary protected status for all nationals who cannot safely return to their home country. So we have a second reading coming up, but we're going to be sitting down with the um, workers group and doing some language change. Theirs is really huge, huge. So we're going to add some of theirs into ours, and we're doing the second vote the first Thursday night. Yeah, and this is a resolution before council, so certainly expressions of support for that resolution, Leticia, can be made basically by going to council and signing up on the, on the speaker's it's, it's list. Yeah, yeah, public. On the speaker's yeah. list to do yeah. that. Do you I think our disability could do something like help them out for that? We can go and support it at the council meeting. Yeah. Basically, okay. anyone, it, it's just in the same way that we went and spoke about support for the uh, uh, the variance request for the second drive in the same way members of the commission can go to city council and speak in support of the resolution. Right. I think so far that there's been pretty overwhelming support yes. for the resolution. Yeah. The first meeting we had, we did not know until the last minute that the worker center also wanted to be part of it. Then when it came forth, our room was packed. So the second room, again for the second room, it will be packed. Excellent. That's our city. Yeah, because I don't I don't want Donald Trump to send him back. So I I think people did nothing wrong, so that's why I think we need I think all all our city I think all our disability people should go and support this kind of stuff. Amen. Very good. So I believe that's all the business for today. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Second.